a wall. Now, what are these? What are these um, responsibilities? What are the responsibilities? The bar mitzvah responsibilities. Or for us, what are the waluda tizaz or waleta tizaz? The bar and the bat mitzvah responsibilities. Or collectively, what are the benai mitzvah responsibilities? Or what are the waluda tizaz responsibilities? Now, whoever becomes a walde, a child, a male child, a walde, or a waleta to his eyes has the responsibilities of an adult or mature Awaki Hebrew or Jew under Hebraic law or under Jewish law. Now, what do these include? And please take notes of this. These include a moral, one has a moral responsibility for their actions, a moral responsibility for their actions. One is eligible, has an eligibility, has both a right and a responsibility to be called to read from the Torah, or for us, from the Orit, or in other words, from the Metzhaf Kedus. Now, this as you should know, if you've been following these teachings, is the Metzhaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals. This is the Metzhaf Kedus. First line is four, and second line is three. They conform to the four types of scriptures in the Old Testament and the three kinds of scriptures in the New. In this book, the Metzhaf Kedus fulfills Revelation 5.5. 5. And the book that he who sits on the throne of great King David, on the throne of the Beta Israel, which is the throne of Yahweh, which is the throne of Jehovah, if you please, published, printed, loose the seals, was able to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. So this is the book speaking of in the Waleta to Isaiah or the Walde to Isaiah, the Walude to Isaiah, that one has the eligibility to be called to read from the Metzhaf Kedus, and in particular to read from the Orit, and to participate in what is known as a Minyam, a Minyam in Orthodox denominations and Orthodox communities. Only the males read from the Orit or Torah and participate in a minyam. And a minyam is ten responsible or adults, in other words, ten welde tizaz members come together and they form what is known as a quorum, a quorum, a quorum. You understand a quorum, and for any business to be done community-wise, it is necessary and needed to have a quorum in an Orthodox and in a Hebraic and even a Jewish sense. So this is very important for us as well to understand. So that's two. Firstly, is the moral responsibility for one's action. Next is the eligibility to be called to read from the Orit. Thirdly, they may possess personal property. Before the age of, of maturity, a child does not have these responsibilities. But upon reaching the age of maturity or the age of a knowledgeability, we can even call it age of gnosis, you know, and being a knower, being responsible, being an adult, one may possess personal responsibility, moral responsibility, that is, um, eligibility to read, and ability and eligibility to read or read. And this for us means in the Bamarinya, 
this means in the Amharic, the world Amharic language, the purified Amharic language of the Metzhaf Kedus. And it's this book, Yovazen, that they must read from and be able to read in pure and in proper Amharic. Now, in addition, they possess personal property. They may be legally married according to Hebrew law at the age of 13, once being able to complete the, the, complete the, the responsibility, complete the, the, I can, what's the best word to call it? Mm, to show themselves mature, to show themselves as respectively males, men, or women in the Torah scriptural, scriptural and biblical sense. And we're going to dovetail this with the Metzahaf Kedus, or the Bible in English. And there's a very important section in the Bible when you understand the Bar the Mitzvah, you understand, and you understand what is being said, especially in Galatians, concerning the law and our schoolmaster, then you can see that the early apostles of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ were speaking in these Hebraic and even Jewish, you understand, terminology and Jewish sense, you understand, or Hebraic sense, because our black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach, he is a Hebrew or a Jew, but more correctly, he is a black Jew. Now, lastly but not leastly, of these basic five, these, the, these um, five um, prerequisites, the fifth is they must follow and apply where applicable the 613 laws commandments, statutes, precepts, and judgments of the Orit, or of the Torah. Now, below the age of Bar Mitzvah, you understand, or below the age of the Wolda to Izaz, the Waleta to Izaz, the Waluda to Izaz, below that age, children are considered exempt or ones are considered still a child because they have not successfully completed the rite of passage. And therefore, in that childlike sense, still being a child and not mature, they are exempt from the Hebrew law or they're exempt from the Judaic or Jewish law, although they must undertake mitzvahs mitzvahs, commandments, or t'izaz, t'izazat, gradually, under their parents' tutelage. So, in the Hebraic way of life, there are responsibilities for the parents. So, many of y'all who are parents and have the right and the responsibility to teach your children should understand what your responsibility, what it is that you must know, and while there is still time, teach your children who are under your guardianship, who are under your responsibility. There are those of us who may have learned these things too late and therefore must trust the Almighty if it is his will to show mercy and to still allow us to do what it is that we can do. But those parents who still have the opportunity, it's important to learn these things ASAP. So even if one is below that age of the walde t'izaz or waleta t'izaz, children are considered exempt from that Hebrew law and from the law, although they must undertake the mitzvahs, the tzazad, gradually under the parents' tutelage as training, as a process of training and a process of preparation for their 
coming of age for their rite of passage. This can create very interesting situations. For example, if a child is under the age of the Weldetitzahs or the Bar Mitzvah, ties the Zitzits or the Zitzis, the, the Zerf, onto his own talit, onto his own prayer, prayer, um, shamiz, not shamiz, um, uh, shawl, prayer shawl, they may have to be retied after the bar mitzvah. And we'll get into why some find that that is very interesting. Now, for us, this is giving some basic overview, but for us, let us go to Galatians. Let us go to Galatians so we can see how all of this ties beautifully and in a very uh, symmetrical way, a beautiful and a symmetrical way, all this ties in together. So in Galatians, um, let's go to Galatians 3 for a moment. Now, Galatians chapter chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 3, it speaks of the gifts of the manifest, the ruach, the gifts of the spirit, is by imnet, is by um, subjective faith, and it's not by the works, it's not by the works of the law. In other words, the gift of the spirit of the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, is not by the works of the law, doing the works of the law, but it is by the faith, by imnet, it is by the, the subjective faith focused on the objective. In other words, the imnet focused on the amen, the amen. Now, this is very, a very interesting chapter, and there's much in this particular chapter. However, the, the part that most closely brings out the point that we would like to share concerning the rite of passage, the bar mitzvah, and the, and the bat mitzvah, or the wadetizahs and the waletetizahs, collectively the benai mitzvah in the Hebrew, or in the Ethiopic or the Ge'ez, the Walude Tizaz is contained at we can begin from around um verse this whole chapter is, is is very important. This whole chapter is very important. Um so what we're gonna do is we actually are gonna take it from the from, from the top. It begins off where Hawari Apalos is saying to the Galatians, and please get your um your scripture and please read with us. It says, um, Galatians chapter three, it says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? And it's interesting because this is exactly where humanity and our people, the lost sheep are, the lost sheep right now are bewitched bewitched by white supremacy, bewitched by the Illuminati, the New World Order, the Satanists and Luciferians. Hawari Paulos, he says, O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you, that ye, you all, should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, hath been evidently set forth, crucified, crucified among you. Now, when you study this particular verse, Galatians 3 and 1, where it says that before whose eyes Jesus Christos hath been evidently set forth. What is important and interesting about that is the idea of evidently set forth in the language is a painting. In other words, has been painted, has been demonstrated, you will send by painting. So even in this early time of the first century, um, Christianity or the Nazarene movement that became the Christian movement, there were paintings of 
Jesus Christos being crucified. There were paintings of Yeshua being crucified. So this whole idea of paintings in Christianity and images, you understand, these images were used as teaching tools. You understand, as teaching tools. Of course, later on, people would use many of these images in an idolatry fashion. But that is usually because the teaching have been neglected, you understand, and many people out of ignorance still practicing the, the, the former errors. They have not denied and removed and weeded out these particular errors, and usually because they haven't been taught to, you understand, in the various counterfeit denominations of Christianity. But that is another point. But here in verse 1, where it speaks about um, before whose eyes Jesus Christus or Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, crucified among you, that the set forth, if you go study it, look at the Strong's, you'll see set forth actually means painted, demonstrated by a painting. This only would I learn of you, Hawaii Apollos asked them. This is the only thing I want to learn from you. Received ye, did you Kabbalah, Kebele, did you receive, did you all receive the spirit by the works of the law? Did you receive the spirit by doing the works of the law or by the hearing or by the hearing, you understand, by the hearing of faith, by the hearing of faith? Question, verse 3, are ye, are you all so foolish? Question. Having begun in the spirit, in other words, you began in the spirit, in the, in, in the, as we were saying, Rastafari is a good vibration. It was the good vibration, it was the vibes, which is to say the spirit, the good vibration, the Holy Spirit that you began in. Are ye, are you all now made perfect by the flesh? Are you all trying to perfect yourself by fleshical or carnal doings, doing so-called righteousness? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? Have we, as Rastafari, have we suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, if it really is in vain, he therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, he who is servicing you and performing the service, you understand, of the Spirit to you, and worketh miracles, miraculous doings among you, doeth he it by the works of the law? Are these done by the works of the law or by the hearing? Or, or, or is this done by the hearing of faith? This is a very important um, reasoning here. You understand the differences between the hearing of faith and the works of the law? Because even many of us, if we're not, if we don't understand this, we can also become deceived to go from the hearing of faith and the real spirituality, you understand, being led by the Memphis Caduce, the Holy Spirit, and end up as pseudo so called legalist. This is where Huari Apalos is working from. He's not saying there is no law or he's not casting out the Torah. He's actually building on it in the true Judeo Christian sense that Ethiopia becomes an uh, ancient testimony to for us. Now, in proceeding, the next section is the Abrahamic faith, or the Abrahamic covenant, rather, is a by-faith covenant, that the whole covenant of Father Abraham was bemnet, beimnet, was by faith. It was a al-kidan, a word agreement that was beimnet, by faith. Verse 6, it says, even as Abraham, even as Abraham believed or admitted the truth, mamend God, mamend the sustainer, and it was accounted to him for righteousness because he admitted as truth, the sustainer of the light, sustainer of the firstborn chosen nation, because he was able to admit the Ha Elohim, the true God. This was put to his account. This was put to his account for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, that those who truly are of the true admittance, 
the same are the children of Abraham. So it's not saying only those who are racially related, because look, scripturally, Esau was related. Look, scripturally, Ishmael was related by blood, by flesh, but were not of the imnet. They were not of the faith and the scripture, foreseeing that that Ha Elohim Buruku would justify the heathen through faith, that those who were Gentiles would become justified through their faith preached before the gospel to Abraham. So even from before time, the Wengel, this good news was preached to Abraham. And this is where many Christians don't understand that in Abraham's time, the gospel, you know what I'm saying, the essence of the gospel, they were looking for our black Lord and Savior, the Moshiach, to come from even such a time. And we know this from Ethiopic uh, scriptures, such as Jubilees, Hadenoch, the book of Adam and Eve, shows us that there was a time and a dispensation and those who were of the faith were looking forward to the coming of the Moshiach, even Christ in his kingly character. So, it says in the scripture, the Metzahath, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen of the Goyim, the Ahazab, through faith, preached before the Wengel to Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. In thee shall all the heathen, shall all the nations, shall all the nationalities be blessed. Therefore, be'imnet, in true faith, in true admittance of the truth, shall all be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed. Those who are of faith, even if they're not of all of the deeds of the law, you know what I'm saying? They are blessed with faithful Abraham. Now, here, as we now move into this section, the next section right here, that is we Jews. They are blessed with we, the black Jews. They are blessed with we, the Hebrews. And when you um, check this out carefully, this passage, this passage might, be thus paraphrased, if we Hebrews or Jews in seeking to be justified by faith in the Moshiach take our places as mere sinners, if we take our places just like the Gentiles, it is therefore Christos, Christ, the Moshiach, who makes us sinners? By no means. It is by putting ourselves again under the hug under the law. See, we have become in-laws, not under the law. After seeking justification through Christ, we seek our justification in the Moshiach, that we act as if we are still unjustified sinners, seeking to become righteous through law works. And this is a point that we would like to make clear, that by going through Torah, it's not as though we're seeking to make ourselves righteous by the works of the law, we're seeking to fulfill what the scriptures even say to us in studying to show ourselves approved. And what Christ warned us when he says, you do err not knowing the scriptures, neither the power of God. So a knowledge of the scriptures, a knowledge of the example, a knowledge of holy writ is a prerequisite. It's a fundamental part of us going from the children born again as child and growing up into him in all things and becoming sons and daughters. And this is where the link with our bar mitzvah, our welded tizaz, our bat mitzvah, our waleta uh, tizaz, and the benai mitzvah, the walude tizaz. This is the crux and this is the foundation of that. Now, as we continue verses 10 forward, uh, Galatians chapter 3 says, The man under law works is under the curse of the law. So if one is under law works, there is a curse of not doing such and such works. See, here we have to study and become very, very clear on this. Keeping 
remembering the Sabbath to keep it holy is not a so-called a, a, a law work. You see, it's not a law work because it was given even before the law. It was given before Moses and before the law. And Abraham, the covenant of Abraham, was also before the law and is still intact. And in this chapter, chapter 3, Hawari Apollos will explain to the Galatians and to us why it was necessary, the law of Moses, to keep or to preserve, you understand, as within a, a protected, a protective covering, a protective custody. In other words, the the seed, the zar, this this black seed. You understand? It says, "For as many as are of the works of the law, are under the curse." And this is what we, as once lost but now found, Beta Israel, recognize and should recognize: uh, slavery. You understand? And the captivities and the slavery was part of that curse of the law for it is written curses everyone that continued not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them this is what is written but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God that no man in the sight of Ha Elohim Baruchu, in the sight of Hashem is justified by the law no, none of us. You understand? It is evident. This is very obvious. For it says the just shall live by faith. That the Khan, the righteous, the Zadik, the Khan, they live beimnet. They live by faith. They live by the, the subjective amen, which is known as imnet. They live by faith. And the law is not of faith. The law, the hug, is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So the one, those who do them, this is why we said when touching on the fifth aspect, we said that that the bar mitzvah, you know what I'm saying, once they come to that, that rite of passage, that they must follow or apply where applicable the 613 laws, commandments, statutes, and judgments. And now this requires wisdom. See, the knowledge of it is one thing, but now the application requires wisdom. You understand? To rightly divide the word of truth and therefore to rightly apply the app or the application where possible. So one needs a HD in other words, a high-density understanding of it. And this is where the training and the preparation that we're speaking of comes from. Now, Christos has born, Christ, the Moshiach, have born our law curse, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has born this law curse that we might have the faith blessing. So the law curse, he bore that so that we might have the Faith blessing, the imnet barakat. Christos hath redeemed us from the curse of the law as Christ in his kingly character, our kinsman redeemer, Kedamawi Haila Salase, in the revelation of Rastafari, has also redeemed us as the once lost but now found black sheep, the Ethiopian Hebrews. He has redeemed us, even the Falashas of the West from the curse of the law, being made a curse for I and I and I. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. In other words, they could have wrote this here in Galatians 3 and 13. Cursed is every one that is lynched. Cursed is everyone that is lynched. Do we as a people know anything about hanging on a tree? Do we as a people know anything about being lynched? Now look around. Look around at all the other nations, all the other Gentiles, all the other heathens, and tell me who else has experienced this as we, the lost sheep of the Beit Israel. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. So when they say, God bless America, this is what we've been saying. That the blessing of Abraham has come on the nations the nations, the Goyim, through Jesus Christ, through our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, 
through Yeshua HaMoshiach, that we might receive Kabbalah, Kabbalah, the promise of the spirit of the manifest, the Ruach, through Imnet, through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Now here, Huari Apollos is saying, he is speaking in the way that men would argue out of point. You understand? And it's important for us to understand what does he mean, brethren, I speak after the man of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Even if it is a man's covenant, as, as men make agreement, contracts and agreement, right? And if it be confirmed, even this agreement among men and people, if it be confirmed, no one can disannul that because they have contracted, even among men. And no one can add to because they are not the ones who have contracted and confirmed what was contracted. So how can you disannul it? You wasn't a part of that process. How can you add to it? Right? Now, to Abraham and his seed and his black seed, his, the race, to Abraham and to his race were the promises made. Were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds. He doesn't say and to races, right? As of many, but as of one, as of one, as of Ahad, as of and, Andu, as of the one. And to thy seed, and to thy particular seed, which is the Moshiach, you understand, who, who is the Christ, who is Christos even Christ in his kingly character. Now, at this point, at this point here, we find that the Lord does not add a new condition to the Abrahamic covenant of faith. That because Moses brought forward the law, or Torah, this does not add any new conditions to the Abrahamic covenant, to the previous covenant. And here, at this particular, um, the 51st um, Sabbath and, and Torah portion, and, and the 50th, Ki, Ki Tavo and, and Nitzabim, where we're at right now in our Torah portion readings, we're touching on the Palestinian covenant. You understand? The Palestinian covenant, or the covenant now, which is a part of that mosaic covenant, the Mosaic covenant of the land grant and of the inheritance of the Beit Israel. And it's very interesting for us to understand that in the sense of what's being said here, that the law does not and did not add a new condition to the Abrahamic covenant of faith. And this I say, verse 17, that the covenant, that the al kidan, the word agreement that was confirmed before of God in Christ, that was already confirmed before before the Mosaic law of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So here, Hawari Apollos is giving a very um, legal argument to the so called legalist. You understand? To the legalist, to those who are, as the saying, um, like we live in a very um, adversarial society, a very litigious society today. And even in that time, the, the Hebrew and the Christian community also was very litigious. You know, they were about law. So Hawari Apollos now is arguing that the, the law, which came 430 years later, did not add anything, you understand, or take away or add a new condition. You understand to the previous al kidan to the previous agreement, and the, and those who are into law and legality, this we want to say right now is this book, the Promise Key. You might have seen the Promise Key, and this is one of um, um Leonard Percival Howell, one of our Rastafari, um, we can say Rastafari martyrs, and one of the first proclaimers of Rastafari back in the twenties and 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 thirties. And he says something here that I just want to introduce to you, and we'll hopefully get more into that. It said that Howell, within the Promise Key, he teaches how to fast, how to heal, and that education 
should be free and compulsory. He admonishes his readers, quote, and please take down this quote, he admonishes his readers not to follow courthouses. Don't follow their, their courthouses and doctors. They will fake you to death. And a whole documentary, a whole lecture can be done on that. Not to follow courthouses, that means their so-called law and their so-called legal system, right? Not to follow um, courthouses and, and, and doctors and the medical system. The two things, this is like the two horns on that beast. One horn is their courthouses or so-called law, and the other horn is, is, is the doctors or the medical related to the health. These are two cornerstones that must be understood in their proper way and not to follow Babylon's courthouses, Babylon's law. This means that we have to be educated in the law. Ever wonder why many so-called Jews are either into or traditionally have been into law and medicine, law and medicine? Because scripturally speaking and biblically speaking and Torah speaking, that's the basis. There we have the basis of law as well as medicine. So it behooves us to understand this half of the story that was suppressed previously but is being revealed presently. So it goes on to say that in verse 18, for if the inheritance be of the law, is our inheritance of the law and legality? If it is, it is no more of promise. Therefore, it can't be a promise if it's of law, but God gave it to Abraham. Ha Elohim gave it to our father Abraham by promise, by a promise. Now, the true intent of the law, the true intent of Torah is the next portion right here from verses 19 to 24 of Galatians chapter 3. The true intent of the law is condemnation. That's the true intent of the law. You understand? The true intent of the law is condemnation. And as a what? Preparatory discipline. And as a preparatory discipline, please make a note on that, that the true intent of the law is condemnation. Do you recall the other area where Hawadi Apollos, where he would uh, write to some brothers and sisters, and he would let them know that the real purpose of the law as well, um, knowing this in First Epistle to Timothy, and knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, the law is not made for a a a a sadic so a sadic. The law is not made for a sadic. It's not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless. The law is made for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly, and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers, and murderers of mothers for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Now, when you look up that word sound doctrine, it's going to dovetail with what we said just now about the promise key. Sound doctrine means that which is uh, enama, that which is healthy, healthy teaching. Healthy teaching as the idea right there of health, of healthy teaching. So if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound, healthy teaching, according to the glorious gospel, the glorious wengel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, which was committed to my trust, and this is what's committed to our trust, and each one that goes through the rite of passage is also confirming this is what has been committed to their trust. So we can see here, Hawari Apollos is following that basic bar mitzvah, that bat mitzvah in particular, with his, his disciples, such as Timothy, following this bar mitzvah. And here, with the community of Galatia, um, the Galatians community, he's also following the same principle. Now, the true intent of the law, of the hig is condemnation. And 
as a preparatory for discipline. And in First Timothy, it shows us exactly, First Timothy chapter 1, it shows exactly who is the law intended for. It's not intended for a righteous, a righteous man. A righteous man or a tzaddik, a tzaddik is already an in-law. He's not under law. He's already in law. So we have to understand what this means. We have to comprehend what this means. Now, here, verse 19, mm -hmm. verse 19, it says, Wherefore then serveth the law? And wherefore, in what way does the law serve? Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added. The law was what? The law was added. It was added. The law was added because of transgressions. The law was added because of transgressions till the seed, till the race should come to whom the promise was made, until that righteous generation could be born, you understand? or be reborn, or born again, until that righteous generation you understand, should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained, this, this was ordained by angels, by angels, Malaikt, in the hand of a mediator, in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. In other words, the mediator is not just mediating for one party. A mediator is mediating between two parties. So we can see Moshe, Muse, in this kind of example right here as its mediator, but it's affirming once again, Ahadu Amlak, Yahweh Ahad. It's affirming again the oneness, the oneness of God where it says, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Is the law against the promises of God? God forbid, God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, if there was a law that could give life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Therefore righteousness, so he's showing that there's a difference between that righteousness of the tzaddik, you understand, of the tzaddik, that righteousness of the righteous, and the purpose and the giving of the law, what the true intent. See, all of this is basic. This is basic Rastafari, we can say bar and bat mitzvah. You understand, for Ethiopian Hebrew, bar and bat mitzvah. This is all basic teaching right here from the New Testament. And notice that this is from the New Testament. And it's pointing to the real reasons and the usages of the law in the Old the old so-called testament. But the scripture have concluded all under sin. The scripture have concluded that everybody, you understand in the words, this metaf concludes all, all of us, under chatiyat, under sin. The scripture, the scripture, the book, have concluded all under sin. That the promise by faith, that the promise by faith of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christos, Yeshua Ha Moshiach, might be given to them that believe, might be given to them that Amen, that exercise the subjective aspect of the Amen, that exercise in that, that Amen, you know what I'm saying, that admit as truth, that admit the truth. <coughs> as being true, all right? But before, verse 23, but before faith came, we were kept under law. Now, before faith came in the person of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, before faith came, we were kept under law. We were kept under the law. Shut up to the faith. Shut up, in other words, preserved, protected, kept locked to the faith, which should afterward, which should afterward be revealed. So there, even from such a time, there was a revelation, 
even in our time of the Rastafari revelation, this was written before the revelation, but even that which was written before said there would be a revelation. So these here was kept under the law. They were shut up to the faith, which should afterward be revealed. Now here is the penultimate of the point that we were seeking to get to. We would have just read from right here at the beginning of this, but we said we need to put it all into proper context and then build it up like that so ones would know what is the true context of what's being said right here. Now here in verse 24 it says, Wherefore the law was our school master to bring us to Christos, to bring us to Ha Moshiach, to bring us to the Messiah, to the black Messiah, if you please, that we might be justified, that we might be justified by faith, by faith. Now, here is the part five of this section right here, where the rule of the Mitmanon's life, the rule of our liberty, is gracious is to be gracious, not to be legalistic or legal, but to be gracious. This does not, um, this does not remove the usefulness of the law. Because remember, First Timothy tells us exactly who and what and for what reasons the law is. So if one does not have the law, how will they restrain? Just let's re let's remind you of what needs to be restrained. How would they restrain? The lawless, the disobedient, the ungodly, the sinners, the unholy, the profane, the murderers of fathers, the murderers of mothers, the manslayers, the whoremongers, those who defile themselves with mankind, men stealers, liars, perjured person, and every other thing that's contrary to healthy living, to healthy doctrine. How would they restrain it? And when you look at where counterfeit Christianity has gone to by saying that um, the law is no more. Just through faith in Christ, therefore the law is no more. We see an increase in that lawless doctrine. You understand? That lawlessness, we see an increase of lawlessness. Once again, proving our point about so-called counterfeit Christianity and where they are in error concerning the word and the teaching of this, because we don't know Christ apart from the spirit and truth as it is as it is written and as it is confirmed in our spirit and in our experience. So how would this believe then if they say they're Christians and the Bible here in spirit and truth is saying something different and there's a different application than what they have shown us? Who are we to believe? We to believe our our lying eyes, our lying ears? or believe the, 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 the word in spirit and in truth. We're to believe or admit as truth the word and let every man let every man be a liar. But God, the true God, true. So here it says, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So now after that faith, after we come to that maturity, and here's where the bar and the bat and mitzvah the the welder and the welter to his eyes come into the rite of passage that when after that faith has come after we are mature you understand and have grown to that level of the faith we are no longer under the schoolmaster but the schoolmaster has helped to raise us and to bring us up to that maturity made us wise in other words to salvation it says that the justified mitmenon or the Tzadik Mitmanah, you understand, or, or the, or the, the uh, um, righteous Mitmanah is a son. And here's the key part, is a son in the family of God, not a servant under law. Now, this is the Schofield study by, I don't know if you can see this right here, but this is exactly, um, where is it, right, right here. That's exactly what we've been saying, it says, is a son, is a son. So this is where we go from child, from being children, and being born again, we become a child of God. If we're not born again, we're not children of God. We are creatures. 
we are creatures, creatures that he has created, but not on that level of children. When we are born again, we become children. And we grow up now through the discipleship and the studies and, and for children to that, to that point of bar mitzvah. When we grow up, then we become sons and daughters. You understand? So the justified mitmanon is a child, in the fa- is a son, rather, in the family of God, not a servant under the law. Now, hear this. This is conclude this part. And then there's some interesting footnotes right here that we want to touch on under this heading of the Rastafari Bar Mitzvah, you understand, um, under the rite of passage, the rite of passage, which is very, very important for us. We need the rite of passage. And it's, it's been here. The rite of passage has been in our face. So when we as black folks talk about we as black people, unlike Africans and others, don't have no rite of passage, it's been right here in the scriptures. You understand? For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christos or Christ Jesus or Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. As many has been what? It says baptized. Remember we touched on spiritual baptism a moment ago? And even the study of law and Torah and scriptures is a part of that immersion, that baptism, washing. You understand? Washing of water by the word, in other words. There is neither Jew nor Greek. I like to say it here to, to update it, there is neither black nor white. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christos Jesus. Now we need to understand the context, because some people take that scripture right there to... Um, commit abomination. You see, they take that right there and say, well, see, there's no male or female, whatever, whatever, like that. Well, they're saying that in this family of God in Christ, you understand, there is, those walls have been brought down, but we all become as one in Christos Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. You are of Abraham's seed. And he's He's arguing this and proving this from the point of view of faith, from the point of view of the promise. And heirs, and we become heirs, that means inheritors, according to the promise. And now, this is the cornerstone of what has been proclaimed, even in the preamble of the Ethiopian World Federation Constitution, for those of my brothers and sisters who are informed about the Ethiopian World Federation incorporated in that constitution that was given us through even an angel, through Dr. Malaku Emmanuel or Emmanuel Bayan, you understand, in the 1930s. Um, it says, Our divine heritage, our divine heritage. Now, our heritage is part of an inheritance. And here in the scripture, we're seeing that says, if ye be Christ, if you be Christ, there's a standard to be Christ. You understand? There's a requirement in, in righteousness to be of Christ. Then are ye Abraham's, then are we Abraham's seed, and heirs, and heirs according to the promise. Now, this ends Galatians chapter 3, and we just went through the entire chapter. And there's, a, there's some footnotes that we want to deal with as well. But we want to meditate this for a moment. Meditate what we've gone through and what we've read for a moment. And then we will have to deal with the, 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 there's a six-fold answer for the question that's asked in verse 19. And in verse 19 it says, wherefore then serve the law? The answer is sixfold. The answer is sixfold, and we need to touch on that. Then in the, the next verse, that, uh, verse 24, where it says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. The law is speaking of the law of Moses was our schooling. The law of Moses was our initiation. It was our schoolmaster. We need to understand the law of Moses, and there's a footnote summary. There's a footnote summary at that 
portion. Then there's the Christian doctrine or the teaching of the law. We also need to touch on that as well. And this is all footnotes that are contained in the Schofield Study Bible. Very um, accurate um, footnotes dividing Scripture from Scripture and, and, and making the connection in the Word for us. That is, 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 is the footnote study of this. And then there is the schoolmaster, the idea of schoolmaster. We've touched on this elsewhere, but the pedagogos or Bamarinya, there's the Mogzi, which says the law is our schoolmaster. We need to understand that as well. And this is just a part of this one particular chapter. Now, in chapter 4, he goes on, Hawari Alos goes on to explain much of this, um, I call this the rite of passage. This is the bar mitzvah. This is the world that is eyes right here within the scriptures. And this is what we want to touch on um, coming up next is speaking of that adoption, is speaking of that, of, that, of that sonship, you understand, becoming from a child to son. So what Hawari Apollos is saying that y'all were born again. You were regenerated. You were born again and you became children. Now you need to grow up. And in growing up into sonship, you understand, there's a certain responsibility. But see how all of this comes together. You understand how the, the Abrahamic covenant, you understand how the law of Moses, how each one of these, when properly understood, they become the the building blocks, you understand, for us as once lost but now found Beta Israel, and especially for us black peoples as the so-called Falashes of the West and for those of us as the elect Rastafari. So this is a very important teaching, my brothers and sisters. I want you to stay tuned, and y'all willing, we'll continue on this. But please review this particular chapter, if you can get your hands on a Schofield Study Bible at our website, www.lojsociety.org, we have it up there for a free download. You can use it on all, uh, just about all of your, your mobile and so-called media devices as, as a study guide. It's good to get a hard copy as well, but it's good to have both of them, you understand, know whether digitally as well as the hard copy. So... Until the next part of this, until we continue this, once again we say Shalom Ras Tefari. Ine Ras Yadinos Tefari. Shalom.